Hey everyone, it's Laura and welcome back to another video. I figured it was time for another Q&A video, so I headed over to Instagram, which if you haven't already been following me, then please do. It is at Laura Vong. And ask you guys to enter questions that you want me to answer in my next video. There were legit hundreds of questions. <laughs> And I just picked the most commonly asked questions, so I can't answer everyone. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to answer as many as I can. All right, we'll just get straight into it. I'm gonna to try to keep these answers short and sweet, but informative. How do you narrow down your list of schools to apply to on the struggle bus? What I found really useful in narrowing down my school list was the IDEA Dental School Guide or Guide to Dental Schools. I'll link it down in the description box below, but it's their guidebook that goes over all of the basic stats of each dental school in the US. So I guess overall, take into consideration your scores, your GPA, the school's mission, what they're known for, how their curriculum is, the location, the tuition costs. I'll link the video that talks about how I chose my dental school in the description box below. Is volunteering an important factor in admissions? I'm not on an admissions committee, so I don't actually know the true answer to that if there is one. But in my opinion, yes, volunteering is an important part of your application. Dentistry is a healthcare profession, and if you are going to be a healthcare professional, then that means that you have a commitment to give back to your community in some way, shape, or form. So volunteering as a pre-dental really shows your commitment to that. Can you give tips for staying motivated to study for the DAT during quarantine? I think the most valuable tips that I could give would be stick to your study schedule. Use the Pomodoro technique if that works for you. That's how I like to study. It's where you study with no distractions for a chunk of time and then take a quick break and go back to studying and then quick break. And so that works well for me. But find your study style and stick to that. Make sure to get rid of your distractions. So put your phone away, close your tabs with YouTube and any other websites that may distract you from studying. Best way to prepare for the DAT? I have a video all about how I studied for the DAT and how I recommend studying for it, so I will also link that below. Did you study head and neck anatomy as pre-dent? If so, how did you study for it? I actually did not take any anatomy class during undergrad. I wish that I did. For our curriculum, we dove straight into head and neck anatomy. So it's really helpful to know because you're gonna be working in this area and it's really vital that you know and understand the anatomy. So getting a head start on that definitely helps. Okay, this question popped up a lot. How important is GPA? It's important, but it's not everything. You've got your GPA, your DAT score, your extracurriculars, your personal statement, your letters of rec. You have a bunch of things to buff your application if that makes sense. So if you think that you have a lower GPA, then hopefully you can improve it by the time that you apply. I know that some people with low GPAs, if they don't feel that they're ready to apply for dental school, then they will do either a post-bac or take extra classes at a community college to boost their GPA. I recommend trying to keep your undergrad GPA at least above a 3.6. Do you ever want to own your own practice? Yes, someday I do. What kept you motivated through everything? When you're pre-med or pre-dental, pre-healthcare, I feel like it's very easy to get discouraged because it's really competitive and you constantly question whether or not it's all worth it. But it is. Things that kept me motivated, volunteering. When I was a pre-dental, volunteering at dental events or just shadowing really kept me motivated because it reminded me of what I wanted to do and why I want to be a dentist in the first place. So if you're losing some motivation, it's totally normal, but just go out there, volunteer. I know you can't right now, but once you can, get out there, volunteer. Also, something else that keeps me motivated is following current dental students because they've got good advice to give and lots of motivational words so if you aren't already, go follow some dental students. I wanna be a dentist now, but I'm in dental hygiene program getting my bachelor's, now what? That's totally fine. I know a couple people that got their dental hygiene degree first and then went on to pursue dentistry because they realized that they wanted to do more. It just means that you'll have more dental knowledge when you get into dental school. Did you take any gap years? Yes, I took one gap year and did not regret it. I loved it. I made a video all about gap years, so make sure to check that out. For a college student that wants to get into dental school, what classes help? Make sure to check out my video on majors and classes to take as a pre-dent because that covers everything. A lot of these questions I've already answered in previous videos. Sorry if it just seems like I'm referring the answers to a previous video, but those videos I put a lot of effort into and I think that your questions are best answered there. So I'm just 
gonna refer you to those. One regret or something you changed about your dental school journey. I think that if I were to redo my pre-dental journey, then I would have assisted. I don't regret it, but I think that I would have found it very useful if I had done that before. What's the hardest thing about dental school? I guess it's different for each year. First year, the hardest thing was just all of the academic work because we were just lectures eight hours a day, every day, and exams, like three to five exams every single week. Second year was when we started doing sim clinic, and so that was hard because we had to spend a lot of time in lab outside of school. And during third year, the hard thing is getting used to clinic flow and actually working with patients and working on patients. For me, if I were to just pinpoint one thing that's been the hardest for me in dental school, it would be class twos, you know, drilling class two fillings, which you will understand once you get to dental school, how difficult it is to drop a box. Will schools look at applicants' social media, and if so, should it have dental stuff on it? I don't think that dental school admissions necessarily go out of their way to look up every single applicant's social media, but you should be precautious of what you're posting. So make sure it's professional. Don't have anything on your social media that you would not want dental admissions committees to see. You don't have to have dental stuff on it because they're not going to pay attention to that. They're going to pay attention to your application, not your social media but just make sure that you keep it clean. Should back pain be something I consider when deciding a career in dentistry? There are things that you can do to avoid getting back pain, like learning good ergonomics, which is what you'll learn in dental school, exercising helps and doing stretches. It's definitely something to consider, but it shouldn't be a make or break in your decision to become a dentist. Why did you choose dentistry over medicine? I have a video all about this too, so I'll link it in the description box below. I go into detail about my whole decision making and my thought process about why I went from pre-med to pre-dental in that video, so I'll just refer you there. Personal statement help. Okay, I feel like it's hard for me to give tips over a Q&A. I think I'm just gonna have to make a whole personal statement video, but I think my biggest tip would be start early if you can. Just jot down ideas because it's gonna take a couple of drafts before you come up with a really cohesive personal statement. Reflect on why you wanted to be a dentist. It doesn't have to be an amazing like aha moment. I did not have an aha moment, but there were a lot of things that led me to my decision to pursue dentistry and so I mentioned that in my personal statement. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to make a video about this because this is a topic that a lot of people asked and so I think that I'm just gonna make a separate video. Those are my tips for now. What was your GPA? It looks like I graduated with a 3.77 GPA. Any tips on preparing for MMI interviews? Yes. I have got a video all about interview tips, so make sure to check that out. Did you do research in undergrad? If so, what kind? Very briefly, I had two research positions in undergrad. The first one was at Seattle Children's in a wet lab working for a cleft palate project. And the next one was working through my school's pediatric department. I enjoyed that one a lot more because it was more clinical. And so I actually got to work and interact with patients during their initial visits and follow-ups and such. Would a study abroad trip make you stand out? P.S. I love your vlogs. Thank you. I think that a study abroad trip would make you stand out. I wish that I had done a study abroad during undergrad. And so if you have the opportunity to, then I highly recommend it. It's a great way to learn about other cultures and just travel while learning. What are the recommended courses that you found most helpful in dental school? For sure, biology and biochem. Any thoughts on going to graduate school for a better chance of getting in? It's definitely one way of showing your advanced education and raising your GPA, but it's not necessary. How did you tell your parents you wanted to be a dentist? What did they say first? There's no like juicy story. I just told them and they were like, oh why? And then I told them why and then they were for it, so very supportive. Are there some majors that look better than others? No, 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 no. Dental schools don't care about your major as long as you meet all of the prereqs and I cover this in my majors and class video so go check that out because I think it has a lot of helpful information. Can you use loops even if you wear glasses? Yes you can. You can get prescription loops. Are you planning on specializing? No. Most surprising thing about dental school? Uh. I think how much you're able to learn in such a short amount of time is what has surprised me the most. Expectation versus reality in dental school. I think that I expected dental school to be very, very difficult, and it is, but what's nice is I did not expect to have this much 
time in dental school. I guess that comes back to how well you manage your time, but I'm very surprised at how much free time I've had and how much I've been able to actually socialize with my friends on the weekends and stuff. So that's definitely a expectation versus reality. I thought it was gonna be locked up in school all the time, but that hasn't been the case. So how many letters of recommendation did you have and from who? Two of them were from biology professors and one was from the general dentist that I was working with. What to avoid in a personal statement? This will be answered in my next video about personal statements, so watch out for that. Could I work as a dental assistant during undergrad? Yes, you can. If you're able to find a dentist that's willing to teach you how to become a dental assistant and go through the proper certifications and uh, what do you call it, trainings, then you can for sure do it during undergrad. You don't need to go through the dental assisting programs. How are you able to financially sustain yourself while in dental school? I'm genuinely curious. Loans. Should I buy the Adia Guide to Dental School or can I find everything online? I recommend using the Adia Dental School Guide because I used it and I found it very helpful. I think it's worth the money. Did you ever consider becoming a dental hygienist? No, I did not, but my mom's a dental hygienist. If you want to go and watch a Q&A that I did, I will link it in the description box below. If I'm not planning to take a gap year, when should I take the DAT? A lot of my friends who did not take a gap year took their DAT either at the end of sophomore year or sometime during their junior year. Can you work while in dental school? Yes, but they've got to be like very part-time flexible jobs because once you're in dental school, that is basically your full-time job. If your GPA is low, does that mean getting in is a no? Like 3.5 below? No, for sure not. Having a GPA below a 3.5 does not mean that you're never gonna get into dental school. You can make up for it in other ways, like having an amazing DAT score, or if you take extra classes to boost your GPA. If you have amazing extracurriculars, that also helps. GPA is just one factor out of many that they take into consideration, so keep that in mind. Does age matter when applying to dental school? No, that's totally fine. I know people who started dental school in their 30s, and so I don't think that age should be a factor in whether or not you decide to pursue dental school, and dental admissions committees should not view your age as a barrier. Those are all the questions that I had time to answer in today's video. Now on to the giveaway. I have teamed up with DAT Bootcamp to give you guys a free three month subscription to DAT Bootcamp. If you've already watched my DAT video, then you would know that DAT Bootcamp is the number one resource that I recommend to all pre-dental students when studying for the DAT because it's literally the most comprehensive and the one that I found the most useful. Okay, so now on to the giveaway rules. You just have to be subscribed to my channel, Laura Smiles, subscribe to DAT Bootcamp on YouTube, like this video, and comment, I want in. For a bonus entry, make sure to head over to my Instagram. The deadline to enter this video will be May 4th, 1159 Pacific Standard Time, so make sure to enter by then. And that is it for this video. Good luck to all you pre-dentals who are entering the giveaway. Bye.